my daily routines. They used to be simple. Ah, why does this bed feel so comfortable? Come on, get it together. Professor's gonna kill me if I'm late again. Breakfast of champions. A single slice of bread. And where's the jam? Did I even buy a jam? <sighs> Maybe some toast will jumpstart my brain. Got to remember all the Shakespeare's quotes today. To be or not to be. Wait, what was I thinking of again? Huh? I put this for a minute, right? No, no, no way. Please, please don't tell me. Oh my god, it's past 12 already. <sighs> so, yeah, this is what I mean by my daily routine. I keep repeating the same task again and again. Because I thought that I haven't done the task. <sighs> what is wrong with me? So, ladies and gentlemen, this is what we call Alzheimer's disease. However, you might be wondering, what is Alzheimer's disease? Basically, Alzheimer's disease is a brain disorder that gradually destroys memory and thinking skills, eventually impairing the ability to perform basic tasks. Alzheimer's disease is named after Dr. Alois Alzheimer, who first identified it in the year 1906 by observing abnormal brain tissue in a woman with memory loss, language problems, and unpredictable behavior. Let's talk about the signs and symptoms of Alzheimer's disease. Alzheimer's disease actually progresses through three main stages, each with their own distinct symptoms. In the early stage, patients may have memory lapses, such as forgetting recent conversations or all events. They may also have difficulty finding the right words and repetitive questioning. When the disease progresses to the middle stage, patients they may exhibit worsening memory problems, having difficulty recognizing family people as well as increasing confusion disorientation and wandering aimlessly they may also have difficulty with daily tasks and may need support for daily activities as the disease progresses to a later stage patients may experience significant memory problems requiring full-time care and assistance with all personal care needs besides that they may experience severe and distressing symptoms including persistent hallucinations and delusions they may also experience and exhibit severe weight loss, incontinence, and gradual loss of speech. Now, moving on to the pathophysiology of Alzheimer's disease. Basically, Alzheimer's disease is a progressive neurodegenerative disorder with an unknown exact cause. However, there are two main characteristics of brain abnormalities, which are amyloid plaques, which are sticky clumps of beta amyloid proteins between the nerve cells, and neurofibrillary tangles which has twisted fibers of tau protein inside the nerve cells. These plaques and tangles will disrupt the nerve cell communication and brain function, leading to Alzheimer's symptoms. Over time, beta amyloid plaque builds up and activates the neuronal immune system and causes chronic inflammation. It's toxic, which actually leads to nerve cell damage. Here are the key risk factors for developing Alzheimer's disease. Number 1. Age the risk increases with age, doubling every 5 years after a person is 65 years old. Second, family history and genetics. Family history of the disease and genetically inheriting the APOE, epsilon 4 allele can increase the likelihood of developing Alzheimer's. Number three, lifestyle. Risks are higher for individuals with underlying health conditions such as cerebral vascular diseases, diabetes, hypertension, or a history of traumatic brain injury. Now, let's look into environmental risk. Firstly, low educational level. Numerous studies have shown that individuals with lower educational attainment have been found to be at a higher risk of developing AD compared to those with higher educational attainment. Next, decreased brain size. MRI studies have consistently shown that individuals with Alzheimer's disease have significant brain atrophy compared to healthy controls. 
Therefore, individuals with smaller brain volumes, especially in specific regions like the hippocampus, have higher risk to develop Alzheimer's symptoms as they age. Let's take a look into the Diagnostics Criteria by Diagnostical and Statistical Manual of Mental Disorders, or rather known as DSM, 5th edition. So firstly, cognitive impairment should at least include one of the following criteria. First, impact memory. Second, aphasia, which is having language difficulty. Third, aphasia, which is decreased ability to perform motor functions. Fourth, agnosia, which is inability to recognize objects. And fifth, disruption of executive functions such as a lower ability to plan and organize. Apart from that, you have symptoms which must interfere with normal work social activities. The symptoms must be acquired and represent significant decline from a previous level of functioning. The symptoms are of insidious onset and progressive based on history of serial mental status examination. And last but not least, the symptoms are not occurring during the course of delirium. A test can be performed to rule out any normality of any indicators in the body. Number one, vitamin B12 and folate level. Vitamin B12 is crucial for neurological function, DNA synthesis, and red blood cell formation. Folate is essential for DNA synthesis, repair, and methylation. Deficiency can lead to megoblastic anemia and neuropsychiatric disorders, contributing to cognitive decline. Deficiency can lead to cognitive decline and neuropathy, which can mimic or exacerbate symptoms of Alzheimer's disease. Number two, thyroid function tests in order to rule out any hypothyroidism. Thyroid hormones are vital for brain development and function. Hypothyroidism can cause symptoms such as memory impairment, depression, and slow mental processes, which can mimic or worsen Alzheimer's symptoms. Complete blood count, liver function tests, and renal function tests could also be done too to rule out any underlying condition of the patient. This test can help to detect anemia, infection, hematologic conditions, hepatic encephalopathy, uremia, which can cause confusion and cognitive impairment. Furthermore, the Fosten test. It is a mini mental state examination, MMSE, that consists of 11 questions that doctors and other healthcare professionals commonly use to check for cognitive impairment, such as problems with thinking, communication, understanding, and memory. For the scoring, more than 24 equals to normal cognition, 19 to 23 equals to mild cognitive impairment, 10 to 18 indicates that the patient has moderate cognitive impairment, and less than 9 indicates that the patient has a severe cognitive impairment. Maybe I can find some things on the internet. This one seems interesting. Hi, welcome back everyone. I am Pharmacist Mariam and today, me and my friends will be talking about the treatment and management of Alzheimer's disease. Alzheimer's disease currently cannot be cured. Medications available may only reduce the symptoms and help in slowing their memory loss. We can also manage them by not using medications such as family support. Other non-pharmacological treatment that may help to manage the symptoms of Alzheimer's disease include exercise. Regular physical activity such as aerobic exercise may improve brain function, helps to manage the weight and also the blood sugar. This will reduce the lifestyle risk factors such as diabetes and obesity. The second approach would be incorporating a healthy diet such as the Mediterranean diet which is rich in fruits and vegetables, healthy fats and whole grain. It helps to control blood sugar and provides antioxidant properties towards the brain. Getting enough good quality of sleep is also important for brain health. With the release of melatonin during sleeping, studies show that it helps to improve sleep and cognitive function. One type of medication indicated for Alzheimer's disease is called choline esterase inhibitors. They work by increasing the level of acetylcholine, a brain chemical, by blocking the choline esterase enzyme which degrades them. 
This helps with memory and thinking. Three medications that work by this way and are approved by the FDA are Donpazil, Galantamine and Rivastigmine. They are able to treat mild to moderate types of Alzheimer's disease. However, Donpazil is the first line treatment drug that should be considered for all severity of Alzheimer's disease. Do remember that all of these choline esterase inhibitors drugs need to be taken accordingly with full compliance in order to achieve the desired outcomes. 1 out of 10 people taking this medication might feel nauseous. Other side effects include loss of appetite, diarrhea and slowed heart rate. Hi, I'm pharmacist Umi. Besides choline esterase inhibitors, Another type of medications used to treat Alzheimer's disease is N-metal diaspartate and MDA receptor antagonist. An MDA receptor antagonist regulate glutamate activity, which is crucial for preventing excitotoxicity in Alzheimer's disease. Therefore, an MDA receptor antagonist work by blocking this excessive activity of glutamate at an MDA receptors, which helps prevent neuronal damage. This, in turn, helps in improving cognitive functions and slowing the progression of symptoms in Alzheimer's disease. Examples of drugs that belong to the NMDA receptor antagonists include memantin, nitromemantin, and ketamine. Memantin is the only FDA-approved treatment for Alzheimer's disease, while nitromemantin and ketamine are still in clinical trials. A combination of memantine and an anticholinesterase such as danpazil may also be used in moderate to severe disease. There is potential benefit in this combination as it targets different aspects of the disease pathology, potentially providing synergistic effects in managing symptoms and slowing disease progression. However, they can also have a range of side effects. Some of the common side effects of NMDA receptor antagonists are dizziness, confusion, hypertension, and hallucinations. Therefore, it is important to manage these side effects effectively. The monitoring parameters in Alzheimer's disease include tracking the improvement of cognitive function such as memory, focus, and reduced irritability. It is also important to monitor for potential cholinergic side effects which may include diarrhea, nausea, and dizziness. If there is no noticeable improvement in cognitive function within 4 to 6 weeks, it may be considered to increase the dose of the initial treatment to potentially enhance the therapeutic outcomes. The challenge that we face in Alzheimer's disease is the lack of funding for research. Alzheimer's research is significantly underfunded compared to other major diseases. Besides, the cause of Alzheimer's is still not fully understood. Clinical trials based on theories involving beta amyloid and tau proteins have so far failed, which leads to conflicting theories. Alzheimer's patients also face a wide range of issues, including anxiety, depression, fatigue, and insomnia. This makes caregiving and management challenging. Future direction includes increased funding. It is crucial to advance our understanding of the disease and to develop effective treatments. Next, research approaches can be diversified by exploring alternative theories beyond beta amyloid and tau proteins. Developing reliable biomarkers and diagnostic tools for early Alzheimer's can enable timely treatment, potentially preventing cognitive decline.